Miss Rose, being an expert on general automotive knowledge, can you tell me what would the correct ignition timing be on a 1965 Plymouth Barracuda with a 446 barrel engine and a four-speed manual transmission? <laughs> That's a question. Does that mean you can't answer it? It's a question. It's impossible to answer. Impossible because you don't know the answer. Nobody could answer that question. Your Honor, I move to disqualify Miss Rose as an expert witness. Can you answer the question? No, it is a trick question. Why is it a trick question? Watch this. Because Plymouth didn't make a 446 barrel engine in 1965. The 446 barrel engine didn't come out until mid-year 1969. And they didn't offer it in the CUDA until 1970. However, in 1970, the correct ignition timing would be five degrees before top dead center. Well, uh, she's acceptable, Your Honor. They're coming to get you, Barbara. This week, the ghouls are overbooked at SEMA 2019. And with the Christine Horror Show complete, the overnight nightmare has just begun. It's got blood. I mean, it's a murder house. We're back on the air. So as everybody knows, last year at the Mopar reveal, 426 p.m., they unveiled the 1,000 horsepower all aluminum third generation 426 Hemi. After revealing it, they gave it to yours truly. On the way back from SEMA, and I choose to drive. It has nothing to do with, well, I'm truthfully, you wanna break me down? You wanna say it's just like Rocky out on the beach with Adrian, and she broke him down and made him say he was afraid. I'm afraid to fly. I don't wanna fly. I'm gonna be the last man on earth because I'm the last one that flies. When you think about the fact that one year ago, I was given the engine, figured out what to put the engine in. Christine, 1958 Plymouth Fury, even though it started life as a Belvedere, made it into a Fury, right? Because of the movie. Christine. Very good. So we had just a little under 12 months to get the car completely restored and presentable for the Mopar booth, which we did. A lot of work went into Christine because it was a car we hadn't done before. So it's, and you can't just order parts for it. So by the time, you know, the parts got here, get the body and paint done. Mark's starting this build six months late. We decided to wait eight. But when and you then look started. at what we actually got done, well, first of all, Doesn't I have a lot matter. of things that I have to do in the springtime. Like drive back from Vegas. Yes, I had the idea for the Hemi. Yes, I had the idea for Christine. All of these things come out of my brain, okay? They don't just fly around and, and I just decide which one. I gotta come up with this stuff. So equally, there is a lot of coordinating. This wasn't a project where the whole shop could jump in on. You know, only three guys tore it apart, so I can't go over there and say, how does this go together? Because it would actually slow them down and it just doesn't work. Get the engine decided on the car, then you have to find the car. Find a 58 Plymouth Fury Belvedere Savoy. Buy it for any kind of a reasonable number. Get it back here, dip it, which is what we had to do. Disassemble it, dip it. Find out that all the bottoms of the floors, all of the floors, the bottom of the rockers, the bottom of the trunk floor extensions, the bottoms of the quarters, the rear body panel down low, everything was rotted out. Then go out and had to find two used units, a used floor and a used trunk floor to be able to graft into the car. Now, after all that, you've got a shell set in there. It's not that he forgets. I know, I mean, he's getting older. So he, he just, he doesn't remember two days ago. He doesn't remember four months ago. So he forgets all the hours that the body guys, the metal guys, the paint guys, we were all here putting in on the car. We had to get the correct transmission that would hold the 1,000 horsepower. Thank you, Silver Sport Transmissions. We had to modify the frame to be able to accept the Helifant engine. We did it using all Mopar DNA. So I think people should be happy about that, which I didn't see you around. Wait, we're what? able to officially put the, well, where were you when we were mocking everything up? I was here. The engineer, well, you weren't out there helping. You remember the disassembly? Yeah, you did help with the disassembly and that, that's a good thing. Well, I don't know about a ton. Uh, I. You broke a fingernail <clears throat> and that was the end of your game. Oh my God, that is not what happened. Wow. Ultimately, it comes down to him building the car. So Justin can sit here and work for seven, eight, 10 hours 
get his part done and go home, then it can be the weekend, nobody's down here. Mark's in there on eBay bidding on stupid shit that we don't need. Mini bikes, scooters, stupid helmets. If he would just come out here on a Saturday and Sunday and just put a little, I mean, minimal effort in, you know, then we'd be great. But as far as, you know, pushing me, I, you know, my department delivered, it was his that fell short. I was able to get the frame put together with the engine, with the transmission, with the Mosier rear end. That I'd refer to as plug. Holly provided us with the fuel tank, and the sniper fuel pump system, and we were able to have a rolling chassis that was ready to accept a body that was just in bare metal, but did have the floors replaced. Got it on the rotisserie, did all the body work on it, put it together completely so all the moldings, ornamentation would line up, then took it all back apart again, did the mud work on it, sent it over to Will, put all the body, body panels back on it, jammed it, took it back apart again, did a final block on it, sent it back over to Will. He had to do the paint on the body, the paint on the doors, paint on the fenders, the hood, and deck lid. Once all that stuff was done, it came back over and it was ready to put down on the car. Once it got down on the car, we began to put the hood and the fenders and deck lid back on it, only to find out it changed. She knows, she was there, she she was involved in it. Do you remember any of this? Yeah. Does any of it yeah. ring a bell? Yeah. I mean, it's okay at my age to start losing your memory, but at your age. You can't start a project this late when it's something that's out of your wheelhouse. That's all it comes down to, especially on a car that you're not familiar with. So hopefully moving forward, you know, we'll see what this year brings and uh, maybe we can start to build sooner. Like right now it's February. So this would be a great time to have a car dipped or whatever, but there's no talk of it. So we're kind of on the same path this year already as we have in the past three years. Once we had resolved the galactic problem of the doors fitting the body, we were in a position to do the final assembly. So then it was literally a matter of wet sand and buff, reassemble all the body panels on it, then start building out the interior exterior ornamentation, plumbing out underneath the hood. Putting the pieces together on a 58 Plymouth is a very intricate job. There's a lot of parts that make up that car. Everything was behind. The car came out great. Even though we got about 95% done for SEMA, it was just a very challenging build, but all in all the car, I couldn't be happier with the way it came out. It was supposed to be picked up on Friday. At midnight, we were out there loading it up on Saturday. Sunday morning at six o'clock in the morning, I took off and headed for Las Vegas. I passed the guy on the freeway, hauling the car down there. I don't ever stop. I get to the show, and the first thing I do when I get to the show in Las Vegas, I, I go check in at my motel, and I ran over to the Mopar booth to let him know that any time that car was gonna be here. The car was already there. How is that humanly possible? I passed him. It, that's not cool. I don't know how he got there faster than me, but he beat me by, I'm gonna guess two hours to get unloaded and get the car inside. But the bottom, the bottom deuce. line is, the car made it to the show on time. Shalom Aleichem passed me a loaf of bread. So another car that came in recently, and you've seen it, but I didn't tell you who it was, because I know you're young and you'll appreciate it. You I don't even tell know who people are. You ever heard of a little band called Slipknot? Well, I mean, I've heard of them, yeah. I've never heard of them. Okay. Jim Root, I guess he's a the guitarist there. He's got a 1970 Cuda 4, 46 4-speed Danish Super Track Pack, red on red with red shaker car. How did he get a hold of you? we're going to restore. How else? I don't know, does he have your yacht well, in my written email? about in 25 no, different so... magazines on an annual basis. Okay, so did you just go to your Yahoo Number and it's basically like, car show, Jim Root. 3.2 million fans on Facebook. <laughs> so he emailed you? Yeah, he emailed me. It's a nice car. It's a, a, a numbers car, which is, again, kind of unheard of. And yeah, we put a deal together, so it's out there. Nice. Now. So between him and Goldberg's, that's two 70 Cuda 446 Pro 4 speed Super Track Pack shaker cars. That's pretty cool. Did you know he was a member of Slipknot before you quoted him or after? Goldberg? No. Oh, Jim Jimmy? Ray. I call him Jimmy. Okay. Uh, what's the question? Did you quote him before or after you knew he was the member of Slipknot? It doesn't make any difference to me. You call me up and you say, my name is Lee Iacocca, although he's dead. Okay. And you say, I don't care. It's so the same price for you as it is for Great. Billy Hoyle. White man can't jump, Billy Hoyle, remember? No. Billy Hoyle! <laughs> so I show up on Monday afternoon. That gives me an opportunity to get checked in as I say, go over to the Mopar booth and meet and greet everybody because I love seeing, they're my adopted family. That way, Tuesday, I can start bright and early, refreshed and ready to go. At 9 a.m. when that door opens, it's insanity. It's wall to wall, human beings and elbows. And you just 
duck your head down and get to where you want. I wanted to get to the Mopar booth to see everybody and see what the reaction was to Christine. So I elbow my way through there and get over to Christine and there's just dozens of people flocked around. I, cu I couldn't even get into the area, I'm telling you. They had it cordoned off with those stanchions, the car, but they also had the booth cordoned off with them. And it was an effort to get in there. I, I was excited, but I was apprehensive too because there's a lot of haters in the world. And I just figured somebody was gonna say something about the vent glass not being in it or the door panels because you could see it if you looked in there. Nobody said anything about that. All they said was, this is the ultimate Christine. This is the best, this is great. And it was just, Absolutely overwhelming to be there. The folks at Mopar always open up the doors for us. They treat us like royalty, which is nice. They're awesome. Probably snapped off a couple hundred thousand pictures before noon that day. It was supposed to be a pretty easy day. It wasn't an easy day. Our marketing man, Thomas Beelzebub Lesh, he had us booked solid, unbeknownst to me. I had no idea. I had five minutes to get to a 20 minute away booth. All right, so we're on our first uh, stop of the day. It's almost 10 a.m. here on Tuesday morning at SEMA 2019. How you doing, guy? Love the show. Hey, come on in. Got a reputation. How are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Unfortunately, I'm a Ford man, but uh, well, I, love, I love watching your show. That's you all guys, I care about. You guys uh, do a good job. Well, thank you very much. Yeah. One of the most common things we hear is that I love your show. You guys are the best. You're funny. You look a lot younger in person, you know, that kind of stuff. And then they'll follow it up with, I'm not a Mopar guy. I'm a Ford guy. I'm a Chevy guy, but I love your show. I learn something every week. That was always my idea behind the show is it doesn't have to be a Mopar that you're working on. What I will teach you in the show is what you should be looking for. The mentality that goes behind OEM restoration, we use it at Graveyard Cars, but you guys can use it on any car you're working on. Uh, so it's kind of funny because while my dad and Will was being approached and being asked for pictures and stuff, people kept approaching me and asking me about the outdoor paint booth like I worked here. Like, how much is it? What are the different sizes? What are the filters? So, I don't know, maybe they should hire me to promote this. <laughs> this is our first signing. It's started off kind of slow, but once somebody comes in, breaks the ice, gets a few pictures, it kind of snowballs from that. So we had a good turnout, better than what we thought it was looking in the beginning, but at this point, I'm gonna break away, wrap this interview up. I have to go to the bathroom. I've had three coffees, no potty break, so it's time. And uh, yeah, get ready for our next one. We were busy the whole time we were here. There weren't lines like we've had at other ones, like at the PPG or the Mopar booth. But for the North Hall, because of most people are waiting to get into the Central and the South Hall, we were nonstop taking pictures. So it was good. It was a lot of fun. So we're getting ready to head over to another, uh, do another signing here in about 10 minutes. So I know that we have another signing next. I'm not exactly sure where it's at. I'm kind of just along for the ride. So hopefully my dad knows because it's the blind leading the blind. When I was younger, I thought SEMA was something you go to to have fun if you could get in. And I thought, oh, I get invited to see them. It's gonna be the best. I can check out all the cars. I never check out any cars. It's about the vendors. <laughs> That's uh, uh, I Spy. Remember Eddie Murphy is in Ganda. I'm sorry, what am I doing? Okay. So I'll be careful with what I scream out. We call these career killers. My job is to pay it forward. That's the point. I pay it forward, right? So we go and visit with all of our vendors. I mean, it, I, I'm not going to rattle off lists. You can look it up. Mark, thank you for finding time to, uh, to stop by. I know you are very welcome. Uh, Happy to be here. To the show. You're going to unveil it today. What time? Yep. Yeah. So our 1958 Plymouth Fury, featuring the only 426 Hemi, mm -hmm. third generation, all aluminum, 1,000 horsepower engine, is mm -hmm. in Christine. Will be unveiled at 426 this afternoon. Ironically. PM, she gets it, 426, yeah. Yeah, yeah so that's in the Mopar booth down in the South Hall. So if anybody's okay. here and they wanna go Good check that car, yep, yep. So, I know that you plan to- I just like think it'd be so that. funny, like they Wouldn't see him coming, Wouldn't it be funny to like, interrupt God. me when I'm doing an interview? Here he comes, here comes Mark Warman. Yeah, here. that's not what I see when I walk in there. <laughs> I know, they probably do the same thing you do. You know, where you like diss on somebody, right before they come, like, oh, look at this piece of <laughs> and then turn around and you're like, hey, what's going on? Look at it, feet. Big old feet, yeah. bigger than mine, and you're only, what, 12? Yeah, you got it going on. Chicks just love him, don't they? Yeah, I know. That's so what I so? do, but that ain't what That's they do. That's probably what they do to you, too. They They're don't like, do that oh at all. They go, God, God there here comes he Warman, he's the best. He he's so funny. All right. <laughs> so you see, this is what, he's here for pictures. I'm here to actually give you content, 
to actually make a TV show. So one of the first places that we got a hit there that we work with is uh, Bailey, uh, metal forming equipment. And I'm not great at that, but I had that equipment here that allowed me to be able to build about two dozen different intricate pieces. We talked about when we put the floor in it and the trunk floor and the bottoms of the rockers. Well, we had to also make some pieces that would be transition pieces in there and they need 45 degree brakes, 30 degree brakes. Had to put it on the English wheel and get the right arc to it. Well, I had that equipment. I got by. I'm gonna tell you, I'm not a metal smith guy. They had their metal smith teacher there and I got to spend some time with him and like in five minutes he showed me something that I scratched my head on for weeks trying to figure out how to do mm -hmm. which is to put that round shape in the metal like that so it was nice it was fun did you go there yeah to the Baylor booth okay yeah, yeah. just like I was there for the whole build <laughs> that's my laugh so every year Mopar has a big press release right at 426 426 so we have to be there for that it's usually a huge announcement about some new product so like this year it was the drag pack that after all the years of the drag pack challenger being gone they brought it back which is so cool Leah I love Pritchard that kind of stuff. got to start it up yep yeah Leah Pritchett came out and she she started it up revved it up I think it was loud Chris Jacobs was there and Christy uh Lee was there for it and they do a lot of social media stuff too so it went out all over the all over the globe that's Mopar that's what they do that's what they've always done and so really at the end of that day, what's nice for me is I stay at the Westgate. Yeah, uh, real nice. I stay at the Westgate and uh, way up on the Where do you put the rest of the crew? I, wherever they can get in their budget. Yeah. That's not the point. We're going on about two hours of sleep. We flew in, our producer picked us up, got us back to the house at one. And it is, I mean, it's a murder house. It's got blood, it's got stains. I don't even know why we're put there. If Texas Chainsaw Massacre shot porno, that's what it looks like. That is horrible. So I slept fully clothed on top of the bed with a sheet over it, and um, that's why I'm exhausted. So a little tired, but we'll push through it. Oh, no, and the thing was, we couldn't. We had to come two hours late because she was cleaning it up. Yeah. What did she clean up? And then the other thing that was really creepy is I was like walking around the house. Everything hanging on the wall was like slightly askew, uh -huh. just like. That was probably the most unsettling part for me. And then all the doors and windows leading to the exterior was nailed shut from the inside. So you couldn't get out. You could only get out through the two main entrances. Affordable. Which had 16 deadbolts. So when the killer came in to murder all of us and we were trying to leave, we couldn't get out because there's like. And the fact is you're, you're stressing about something that, that may or may not actually happen. I've got real stress going back. OK, yeah. OK. I've got, I've got the Phoenix Cuda, the 1971 Cuda. 426 cubic inches fire breathing nightmare that was burned up that was real that car <laughs> blew up that's real it's not your chances of somebody breaking in and murdering everybody How about that the real blood on the comforter the real on the wall could have had something to do with the fact that maybe somebody wasn't feeling good where's your empathy is that why he dropped his underwear behind the door before he ran over and <laughs> on the wall in the bathroom? I wasn't there. Oh, so I wasn't there. The problems I'm talking about are real problems, not fantasy problems like yours, okay? I mean, you sell yours to Fantasy Island, maybe they'd like to buy it. It felt very Over real. here, this is the real world. And in the real world, I got a 71 Cuda that burned to the ground, damn near killed the owner, and he'd like to have that car back. So I've got to do that when I get back. I got to wrap that car up. I was happy to see the condition of the floors and the metal in the car when it came back from the dipper because they were solid and they hadn't got affected by the heat, which is important because if they warp or distort, then we're kind of back to ground zero. Well, the, the thing about the stress level for me is, yeah, I've got the fact that my personal conviction is to get the car done and do what my lips said it, I'm gonna do is always eating away at me. So yeah, when we are at things where we're relaxed and everybody's having fun, you guys drift to what party you're gonna go to or what building you're gonna jump off of. What's that big needle thing you guys jump off of? I didn't do that. That's not my idea of fun. I'm thinking about getting back to work and, and fulfilling the promises that I've made. Obligations, responsibility. So every year now that we've been going to SEMA, Mopar schedules a time for us to go up on stage and do Q and A's with the audience, which is a lot of fun. I ain't never gonna die. What do you think of the drag pack? That's wicked. Mopar fans are die hard Mopar people and there's not a thing in the world wrong with that. But when you get up on stage, it's me, Mark, and Alyssa. We're nowhere near to Mark's level of these cars like he is. So you get up there and you're basically, you know, Alyssa and I just sitting here visiting, having a conversation, and Mark's 
talking about every Mopar, every nut and bolt. That car changes. I'm not making that up. We fit the doors, the quarters, the hood, the deck lid, sent it over to Will for pre-paint, came back over, bolted it onto the chassis, nothing lined up. Mark would love nothing more than me to get up there and start stumbling on stuff. So if you just acknowledge you don't know then he doesn't ask. At midnight, the truck driver that was supposed to have it here the day before had been camped out in our parking lot. I'm definitely not in my element. I know my dad says that I love being on stage, but I pretty much black out every single time. I went to start the car up to take it outside. They were in bed, home. What are they gonna ask you? Are they gonna ask me about my ex-husband, Will, I mean. No, we had the fights that night. You what? No, we had the fights at my house that night. Oh, yeah, okay. They, they were engaged otherwise. Then Alyssa just sits there and sweats. She gets nervous. I was down there sweating with cousin Dougie, you know, my whacked out cousin. We were down there midnight, hit the key, starts up, dies. Game over, would not start. Blew a fuse somewhere in there and I was too tired to figure it out. So we pushed it on the truck at midnight, got it down here in time. And then yesterday I figured out what fuse it was. I know that he's just as nervous as I am. He just has a way of kind of like putting on and goes insane. Not nervous. So, you know, <laughs> the Pretty natural actually, yeah. So, yeah. We made it look like the Christine movie car, obviously. Uh, we even got the original material that was used, what was left of the original material that was used on the seats in John Carpenter's uh, screen version of it. So anatomically, other than having a thousand horsepower 426 Hemi in it, it's exactly the car Arnie Cunningham drove in Christine. So yeah, it's a lot of fun. And sometimes we get hit with uh, technical questions, which is good, keeps me on my toes. And I haven't had one yet that I couldn't answer. So. How many 1968 road rotors were made in QQ1 electric blue? At <laughs> Yeah, they're, I don't know. Vietnamese. Because when my dad, when he gets nervous, <laughs> he just gets crazy, I can tell. So I'm Rain Man when I get nervous. Yes. And I don't know that anybody knows a lot of those records were burned up. So I, all, I think they do a lot of percentages. You can go to mymopar.com. Richard Kraft's over there. He crunches all those numbers. And all you could really do today is known to exist. I ordered a 1973 Duster, new, with a 344 speed. Just how many four speeds were built in 73? I've always told that many. But no one has any idea who can tell them. Well, they do. They do. I just don't know what it is. Yeah, from Judge Wapner. Mm, yeah, actually, definitely. Uh -oh, the fart. more nervous he mm, is, the yeah. more like yeah. obscene or crazy he'll be. So my cutoff. Day, well, stop it now. Would you just pick questions? I wouldn't know. My my cutoff date is 71, 73. I, you, what's his name? Les Carr. He's got Carr in his last name. Uh, Tell Les Carr or whatever his name is. I will. I'll get back to him on that. I don't know, but there is a book out that will show you how many are known to exist. Yeah. Probably not very many. The 340, that was the last year for the 340s. It became the 360 after that. Yeah. Uh, we'll be seeing another season of Great Bear Cars here soon. Absolutely. Have a good day and uh, keep watching the new season coming up. Okay. Now that that waste of time is done, Mark <laughs> Graveyard Cars here. Just want to say hey, thanks for watching our show. If you're ever up in Oregon, stop by and say hi. No, and keep I your hand where it belongs, would you? Yeah. Well, I did teach him everything he knows, and now all of a sudden he gets all the accolades for it. It's just not, accolades means that you're getting the credit for it. You know, not all the partners that we work with are Fortune 500 companies, but they're great companies that make great products. And here you are at a modest booth in the middle of other hundreds of modest booths, and you see these lines start forming. And what are they? <laughs> and you realize that they're all lining up there because they either heard that you were going to be there or just saw you over there. And that's when it starts. The signing there was great. We had a bunch of people that had a bunch of pictures blowing up with our, us in it. If you're over there and you do that first signature and somebody sees somebody getting a signature, they think, well, there's a reason. Who is it? And then they think about it and then the next group and the next group. So that's yes. why it's hard when we stop and sign when we're not at a place that we can actually facilitate that. You because can't just do one autograph just, yeah, and run. And it's like, well, wait. What's... And they do not care. They need that autograph. They need that picture with you. They need that selfie and, uh, with you. And I've we had... want to give it to them, too, because, I mean, it's not everyday people ask me for my picture. I think that that's pretty cool. Your knowledge of Mopar is what is floors oh, me yeah, and heart. Absolutely. You're the Rain Man of Mopar, right? Yeah. So a WL23. G1A. You know, she feels forced to have to watch all these car shows with me, but then she's like, that man is so smart. Aw, thank you. Aww. No, that was a great signing. 
Grace and I, end of the day, we were tired and ready to go home or back to the house. Rob Zombie probably used that house for a movie. Everybody's got great booths down there, but I mean, I, I love their creativity over there. They really put on, every year's a different theme. So like this year was, uh, I think it was street graffiti kind of yeah. thing. They always go way over the top too. This year was all low rider, old school stuff, which I absolutely love doing. So I thoroughly love going to that one. They do an so excellent neat. job. It was so cool. It was my favorite place. I got pictures of that. And uh, every year they do a different theme. I don't know what they're going to do this next year, but I'm always excited to see it. And nobody gets to know until we're at the show. So yeah, it's one of our favorites and people really line up. Oh. This year they were lined up all the way down one hall and back around another one. And we usually, we're, we're set to sign autographs for an hour, but a lot of times we're there for an hour and a half. Hey, now come on in, doll. How you doing? I'm yes, you great. are. You're my favorite. Thank you. <laughs> Will's not. Well, you no, guys no, both. <laughs> People come just to check out the set, because that's basically what it is. Well, it's they're like coming set. for us, and then they see how cool the set is, yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Hey, it's okay. I appreciate it's okay. it. It's okay. Would you like Got it? Nice, nice. Come on in. Take two, John. Take two, Johnny. All right. Nice to meet you. Good to see you, buddy. Yeah. Thank you very much. Would you like one? Oh. No, it would be great to have seen Christine over in the booth because I'm just as proud of the body and the paintwork that was done on the car. And that's a hard car to do. So don't, don't think for a second it's easy. But it could have gone toe-to-toe -to -toe with any of the cars in the booth there. But they are, they're the best in the world that are over at their booth with their paintwork and, and it's amazing, it, it is. It, if you wanna be humble, just take a minute and look at some of the names that have won the Riddler Awards that are in the same booth that you're in. And you say, wow, when I was a kid building models, I never imagined that I'd have a model car built after a car that I built or an article written about it. So yeah, well we have fun and we have to play the shtick, the Michael Scott, David Brent thing. I'm, I, I am humble, that's the truth. So again, I gotta say, if, one of the nicest things in the world is when that show is over and everybody's Whatever. done chanting your name, like they say at Rocky, when, when, when all the crowds dissipate and they're done chanting your name. You know what's I humbling? I go up to floor number 35 and I go in there and it's just this really cool little V shape, right? And you, what are we talking about? Talking about the toilet paper in my room. Okay. And, you, and, you, and you do your business and you happening. go to the show, you come back and the little V's back again. And there's a canny. They put a little candy man on your, on your pillow, so. You know what's humbling? After everybody knows our name and getting yeah, pictures and everything. That, yeah. yeah, and you feel so great. You're like, yeah. oh, wow, that's awesome. I and then you go back really to the <laughs> pool of an Airbnb. And then you know right away, oh, I Affordable, much. affordable. Yeah, <laughs> great, great. <laughs> couldn't, even, couldn't even Snapchat. Couldn't even Instagram there from there. It was so bad. No, no Snapchat. No. No, so anyways, no internet. This, this, they charge extra for internet. It's gonna be different, okay? I'm you know what they said when that. I asked? Go outside. <laughs> so it, it's very nice to be able to get away from everybody, clear your mind, think about some other things, change from the thought of Sema, 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 Sema. Well, I'm sure that what she's thinking about is getting out and heading to the strip and drinking, partying with all the idiots. I'm thinking about the tension and the stress that I have when I get back. So you don't know, you will. Uh, client, gentleman's name is Mark, good name, commissioned me a year ago to have a car ready for him by January 15th. We have a real problem here because we have a 1970 Roadrunner that has to be done in 45 days. Good thing it's a solid car, but that's a real problem. So you got Christine done, all your other personal stuff, all the other customer cars, and then now you got to build a car in no time. So uh, entertaining. How many days is that? It's like 45 days. So we had to build 70 Roadrunner, originally his was a 383 four-speed Alpine white black vinyl top V21 hood stripe, okay? Striped elite down the side, just the rent running bird. We are putting a 392 crate Mopar engine in it. We gotta build the entire car, which I just bought before we left here and hasn't even been dipped yet, for the builder's show in Las Vegas, January 14th or 15th. It's 45 days is a long time. No, it's Well, not. we just built Christine in less than that, so. Kind of. You, you need to stop panicking about stuff like this and realize if we're gonna turn out 12 cars a year, that's our goal, right? Right. 
How many cars a month would that be? One a month. I think that's right. And how many days are there in a month? 30. Average, All right. So 45 days, we've even got to trim it down from there. Oh. 45 is a miracle, it's a gift, because at the end of the day, we're gonna knock the car out just like we do. We're gonna increase our volume. We've got people, loyal people who have been with us for years that have been waiting for their cars, and that game is over starting now. We're gonna bang a gong. You remember that song? No. You don't remember bang a gong? No. <sighs> so it's day three. It's our last day of obligations for signing, but it's a blur. So asking me to remember, hey, what was day three of SEMA like, you know? I just remember certain parts of it, not so much the signings. One of the other advantages, and, and it's more so now than it was the first year we went, is we're really recognizable. He decided, you decided to start doing Michael Jackson? Favorite, well, I didn't decide. Why? <laughs> that was pretty good, though, actually. She well, blacked out again, whatever that is, because <laughs> as soon as somebody comes by and says hi, she just locks up. <laughs> Something happens to her, it's ridiculous. I either black out or I vomit. Meanwhile, I gotta carry it, right? It's so amazing to me how many people, this is gospel. And you may want to keep me down, hold me down, beat me down, put me down, but you got to admit, how many people come up and say, dance? Oh, he's precious. I bust a couple of groovy moves, you know, when I'm feeling good, I'm feeling it, right? But they love it. What are you it. feeling? They There's no love music. It. So I'll come up, dance, you man, dance. You should just say no. That's what I'm doing. Here you go. Go ahead, Mark. But you know what that looks like? Like I'm helping my fans out. <laughs> like I'm trying to be nice. There's no music. He's just like, no, you don't need like a You just give it the beat. And then so one dude says, do your Michael Jackson. I went out in the aisle and I busted a couple moves. And thing you know, everybody's clapping. Around. Go, Mark. Go, Mark. Go, Mark. Go, Mark. Basically Go, Mark. a flashback <laughs> to my eighth grade dance. It's crazy, man. Last time I went to a dance. It's crazy. When he chaperoned it, People, pretty much Yeah, happened. I did the same thing there, too. But yeah, it's the worst. Yeah. So, yeah, I did blackout. One of the other things that we get a lot of when we go to the show are these little gifts, just because they like us or whatever. It was cool because we got stopped earlier in the week and this one company says, hey, come by, check out, we got something for you. All right, show me. Oh my gosh, look at that. That is, awesome. that is beautiful. You did that yourself? Yes. Oh my gosh. You did this really neat airbrush mural of Christine. And it's all on canvas. I mean, just really cool things. People, you don't realize how many people truly love the show till you see the projects that somebody did just to give you. And I just thought it was, it was so neat. Yeah, to be presented with something like that, somebody who's a really talented guy, super talented guy. I saw some of his other work when we were there, it's amazing. That's really what makes going to the show and meeting all the people so worth it. We're at the Kaiser booth on day three and probably 15 feet across from us, there's you know these two supermodels promoting whatever they're promoting. One of our camera guys, Pete, is single now, so my dad's just taken full advantage of that. So now when he goes up and like talks to a girl or hits on a girl, whatever, he'll act like he's doing it for Pete, but he's not. Mark's going over there every probably five, 10 minutes trying to do his routine, be witty and charming, all that good stuff. Uh, so he's over there doing that. I hope you guys got all that documented because their smiles weren't even real. And the second he leave, they kind of roll their eyes and just go back to what they're doing. We have a show that airs in 40 countries around the globe and peep <laughs> us. I can't. But yeah, watching Mark trying to do his little flirting thing, that was, that was great. Like I said, if it's on camera, you guys will enjoy that at home. And I'm sorry if I'm popular, I'm minding my own business. I see these two little cuties over here and they're eyeballing the ice tray, right? And I say, you my Even daughter's mind, age. Thousands my daughter of age. guys there why that it has are to be a daughter cute. Age. So why would well, I'm not interested in men? No, <laughs> I know not you, but they are. So what I'm saying is, this, this whole story doesn't make yeah, sense. Yeah, but none of them have a television show, and none of them are known just... as the Mopar Guru. Okay, I could see they wanted me to come over and say hi. That's all I did. I went over and said hi, but then they wanted a picture together no. and an autograph. Oh God, mm -hmm. you're the best. You know, you make us want to be better people and all this stuff. And it's like, okay, good. You know. Doesn't change me putting my pants on one leg at a time. If she gets crazy, she takes it as a personal threat, like some kind of loony thing. What? It's like, oh, you're not gonna do that. I'm telling mom. I'm telling mom. Well, well, tell her. It's on TV. You don't have much to tell. It's all on TV. 
You know, they're human for God's sake. Thursday was the last day that we were officially there. The show runs through Friday, but typically they start, a lot of people start rolling up on Thursday. So we had to run, even on the last day, we were exhausted. We had a meet and greet over at the Mopar booth. And then I was reminded as we were 10 minutes over signing, because people were still coming in, that we had to go over to the Motor Trend booth because they wanted to do a thing with Chris Jacobs and have us up on stage. So we got to go do that, but we had to run from one hall to the other. Yeah, so if you don't remember DL, I go, oh my gosh, look it, we're gonna be on stage for the Motor Trend. Like, I don't wanna do it, I'm not gonna go. And you're like, you have to go. So you reassured me and said, ah, oh, what's the worst that could happen? And I was like, you're right, what's the worst that could happen? The worst happened. I get up there and Chris Jacobs asked me about the build on Christine. I just black out and laugh. That's all I do, I just laugh. Oh, so can you please tell us about the project with the health and motor in it? <laughs> uh, my dad, thank God he was there, grabbed the microphone and like started talking about Christine. But there was like a moment where Chris and I like locked eyes and he was looking at me like, please, like, what's wrong with you? Please. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, yeah. I don't know. But who came? Oh, Ice Daddy. Ice Daddy came. So basically the worst happened. Yeah. Ice That's Daddy. That's probably my biggest regret. It was the worst. Yeah. Like, oh, it was so bad. That was embarrassing. It was. Yeah. And that was kind of a fun one because they gave us a microphone. I asked people for our car show, the Buffalo Motorama, who they like to see come to the show, and Mark is one of the top people they say. That's all I'm saying. That's all you're saying. Was it like a really yeah. small group of people yeah, you it was, asked? It was like three people. My mom was one. <laughs> like a 10 person test group or something? <laughs> to find out in that huge line of people who's more of a Will fan or a Mark fan. Thank you so much. Hey. You're welcome. Did you get one of these? Oh, 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 there we go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you want just the one-on-one? -on -one? What am I? You're the best. But you had to, uh, that's like second. You're the best, too. <laughs> two. Two. Also, two. Also, also, not like the number two. Also, thank you, dear. It comes to find out, you know, most of our fans prefer me over Mark. So that, that was nice to get in real time. Who's your favorite shirt? between the three of us? Be honest. I kind of like Dougie. Oh, oh that's good the answer. Best answer. I love that's it. The same answer. Don't tell him, I love it. it. So the Charger Daytona, that car was a borderline survivor, meaning that Tony came out, we had him on the show, and we talked about what do we do with the car. The owner wants it restored. That was why it was here. But I wanted Tony's feedback, I wanted his input on it. I didn't want to do something sinful. I didn't want to restore a car that everybody says, oh my gosh, why did you do this? You ruined it because it can only be original once, so. Original, beautiful Survivor Daytona, the one I did not want to restore at all. It's only a Survivor once. I'm very firm about it. You have a running, driving, original Daytona that looks good, you leave it. Tony and I looked at the car, and at the end of the day, he says, if it was my car, I wouldn't restore it. I'd, I'd fix this seat, I'd fix this, I'd put a piece of carpet in here and touch it up, and that's what people do with Survivor cars. But the owner has seen that car like that since the day it was new. He bought it brand new. He, he went to his high school senior prom in the car. I mean, he has had this car his whole life, so he's seen it, a flat orange where the paint goes dead on it and the tears in the seat, so he's ready to see it brand new again like it was the day he bought it. So that's why the decision was made. It's a numbers matching car, 440 automatic, it's one of 503 Daytonas ever built. And so, yeah, it's a very rare car, very desirable. And how often do you see somebody who is the original owner of a car and still has it? Now I finished this car, cause it's right over here, uh, and delivered it to Justin four months ago. So with all of our other priorities, we do have a beautiful Daytona coming up uh, to be assembled and will be great TV also but my job, like Christine, has been done way ahead of time. So if there's issues on when it got done, that's not my problem. It's been sitting here, literally right here. It's always nice when Las Vegas is in my rear view mirror. It's a big show, but it's so much stress to get to it, to please everybody, and you never really can 100% do it. But you are so exhausted. You are flat out. It's nice when it's over. But we, like I said earlier, we got to get back to all the cars that are here that need to be worked on that have deadlines on them. Uh, Christine still needs some work, so I'm going to have to keep doing, uh, I got to get the doors, glass, and vent frames in it. 
Um, we haven't had a chance to take it out and go on a nice long drive with it. We've got to get some driving footage with it, but uh, it's a beautiful car. And it's about as right as I could have made it in my time. So it was a successful year when you think about getting that car to SEMA and making it on time and still being able to produce the cars that we produce throughout the year. So, yeah, we do, a, we do an awful lot with an awful little group. So over the last year, and this is 100% honest, Mark's changed it up a little bit. And it's the direction I feel we need to go in. He's given us some pretty tough deadlines. And that's something that we need to stick with. So this past year, we've found ourselves a lot of times working some pretty late shifts and busting some cars out. So I definitely love the direction Mark's going with giving us some harsh deadlines. Just getting a little pushback from my guys, but all in all, um, last year was really good and I enjoyed it. So while we do have our Las Vegas SEMA trip in the rearview mirror, we have a lot ahead of us. So don't forget, we've got Tony D'Agostino, the sandwich man's, sorry, Cindy D'Agostino's 1970 Dodge Challenger RT 440 automatic air conditioning car that we have to have done. We got some good stuff coming up. I know there's some band, and I'm sure I'll get blasted somewhere for it, called Slipknot. Uh, we got his car here. I don't know who's, I guess it's a big deal, I don't know. Um, I think it's angry music. I'm not an angry guy, doesn't really fit my vibe. But we got some big cars, big builds, big celebrities. So I'm looking forward to this next year and see what we can put out. We have Mark's 1970 Roadrunner, 392 crate engine with six-speed Silver Sport transmission, white with a V21 hood. We have our 1969 Dodge Charger Daytona, Hemi Orange, just coming out of the paint shop. We have our blue 1969 GTX that that gentleman's been very, very patient. We're getting ready to reveal that very soon. And of course, Jim Root's car, the 1970 Cuda. And that's a small list of the cars that we have. We have a lot more than that out there. Yeah. All right, what's yeah. the other car? Give me one car, just give me one, give me any 71 Cuda. 71 Cuda, good guess. You can't go wrong with that. We have eight of them. Right, right. What are you talking the about? The Phoenix Cuda. What are you talking about, Malmbergs? You're talking yeah. about the Phoenix Cuda? Yeah. Yeah, we got the Phoenix That's Cuda. one of eight of them. Hmm? One of eight made? I don't know. Really, did they cut the production number down? <laughs> did Marty McFly show up and change history? No, one of eight, you're thinking of the 1971 Cuda 343 speed, plum crazy white top, white interior. That's the one I meant, the one yeah, out in their assembly room. I know it is. So don't try that. All right. Let me take this chair too. Bye. Hey, man, what do I look like? UNICEF? Maybe one day UNICEF will get in the Mopar restoration business and they'd be the folks to see. But in the meantime, y'all gotta work with me. Hello? Who's there? What the hell do you want? No, 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 hey!